So my name is Sudeep Ganguly and I'm the product manager for uh, Autopipe Vessel which is a um, product for designing uh, pressure vessels and heat exchangers and uh, air coolers as well as storage tanks. Uh, we just uh, heard from Natalie our topic for today is interpreting saddle reactions and forces for horizontal vessels. So what is the agenda today? The agenda is uh, we will first cover the reactions, shear loads, bending moment calculations and we will also see the effects of seismic wind motion loads on the above calculations followed by the Zik method uh, saddle stress calculations and I will wrap up with a quick overview of the foundation load calculations. So reaction shear load and bending moment calculations are very important parts of uh, pressure vessel design. Now what happens when we talk about pressure vessel design most of the time it is uh, basically the calculation is based on uh, some codes and standards where you apply formulae but uh, the when we when it comes to support design and the analysis of the reaction forces uh, it is based on uh, first principle the principles of statics uh, basically statical equilibrium so uh, for an engineer who wants to design a safe vessel and also the uh, proper design of the vessel supports and the how how the forces are transmitted onto the foundation it is very critical that we have a very clear understanding of uh, how the forces uh, and the moments are being uh, applied and how they occur for the different loading conditions. So uh, I will start my uh, discussion today and uh, uh, I will try to explain um, as much as possible uh, how these forces are calculated uh, and transmitted and for uh, this particular purpose I have chosen a simple case of a horizontal vessel on uh, two saddles. Now uh, Autopipe vessel can enable you to design a pressure vessel, a horizontal pressure vessel with multiple saddles, up to 10 saddles. And um, when it, when the number of saddles is more than two, um, you cannot use uh, simple hand calculations and analytical methods. Uh, it, it, it has to be done by some kind of, uh, it is, it becomes statically indeterminate. Uh, so you have to use uh, some other method. I will get to that. What autopipe vessel does is it uses a funk, funk uh, transmission matrix method uh, and uh, uh, with that FOC ma matrix method uh, you can analyze for uh, multiple saddles. So in our case today we will be considering just a simple uh, horizontal vessel uh, with two saddles. So I've just drawn the free body diagram. Uh, this is how the forces and moments look like in a, a particular um, uh, horizontal vessel on two saddles. So it is supported uh, by saddle one and saddle two. The first saddle, uh, uh, one of the saddles typically is fixed and the other saddle is uh, a sliding support which may or may not have friction. So I will consider both and I will tell you how, what are the differences and how the forces appear when you in include friction. Uh, what additional forces will appear. So uh, I'll be using these terms very frequently so be aware of uh, uh, these forces that are applied. So R1H is the horizontal saddle 1 reaction. R2H is the horizontal saddle 2 reaction. There will be vertical saddle reactions R1V and R2V. And uh, WT is the weight of the equipment. Um, and uh, SV is uh, the vertical uh, se seismic force. There will be a horizontal seismic force. Basically, when I talk about seismic forces, it is just uh, an externally applied force. Uh, it can be seismic, it can be wind, it can also be motion forces. I will, um, if we have some time, I will try to show you how the motion, motion forces are applied. It is, uh, the effect is the same as a seismic. Basically, you are uh, applying an external force with some acceleration. So, if if I am able to explain you how the seismic forces are acting upon the vessel, you should be able to uh, 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 use the same interpretation for wind and uh, motion as well. So in our case, we'll be using seismic forces. And there will also be a moment uh, because of the uh, horizontal force SX, uh, which I have designated as MSX. And HSD is being designated as the height of the CG from the saddle base. 
So a couple of things to be aware of uh, because I'll be using this also very frequently. First is the sign convention. So when you open your autopilot vessel report, uh, I will show you shortly, uh, there will be mm, uh, a sign convention for it says something like operation int max p seismic plus plus corroded inertia corroded weight. So what it means is you're considering operation case uh, with internal maximum pressure seismic plus plus is a sign convention i'll get to that corroded inertia and corroded weight means you're using corroded inertia uh, for the strength and you're, you're also using corroded weight for the uh, calculation of the weight you can change these settings you can use corroded inertia and uh, new weight which is the more, more conservative type uh, analysis so these uh, are the sign conventions that are frequently used um, here so you should be aware of this uh, like we saw just uh, in the previous slide this is seismic plus plus so the first plus indicates whether uh, the force is applied uh, vertically upward or downward plus means the for force is actually applied downwards so that's something to be aware of and the second plus is the horizontal whether uh, it is applied to the right or to the left so plus is right so as you see in the longitudinal plane there will be four combinations it will be plus plus as you see number one which means vertical downside and horizontal longitudinal right then number two is uh, minus plus which is vertical upside horizontal longitudinal uh, right then plus minus which is vertical downside horizontal longitudinal left and uh, uh, minus minus which is vertical upside and longitudinal uh, left so i'll be using these conventions there's also a sign convention in the transverse direction. Uh, so you can have transverse loading. So there, uh, it is more simple. There's only uh, one uh, sign convention here, which is plus or minus plus being the vertical downside and horizontal transverse. Horizontal transverse doesn't have direction. It can act, act either way. And uh, minus means vertical upside uh, and horizontal transverse. So th these are these two loading conditions are also applicable for vertical vessels. So as you see, vertical vessel is uh, uh, um, kind of easier uh, because the combinations of the forces are uh, not as complicated as a, a horizontal vessel because in a horizontal vessel, depending on which saddle is fixed, which is moving, and which way your forces are acting. Um, the reactions and bending moments will appear accordingly which we will see okay so let's uh, look at a, a quick demo here I have uh, <coughs> so this is auto pipe vessel uh, there are four sections uh, the component section uh, to the left there will be a result section down bottom to the left and there's a 2d viewer and a 3d uh, modeling plane where you can pan zoom rotate and uh, see the details of this um, of the equipment that you're designing so if you double click on the white portion in the 2d sketcher you'll see a design parameter section so I have selected a semi section 8 division 1 and applied some local load methods etc um, the design conditions tab I have applied uh, 0.98 or 9.8 bar, uh, bar uh, pressure 250 degrees C design temperature loading conditions uh, there is a wind load that I have applied IL standard 875 with um, a dynamic pressure of 153 um, and all the other uh, details like the site data and the specific data are all um, entered you can enter earthquake data here um, you, I'll be using this earthquake loading so this is important so I'm using IS 1893 there are many other um, uh, types of design codes that you can use for seismic ASC, DIN, Indian Standard, Paraseismic, UBC, IBC, etc. So I'll be using IS 1893. Seismic zone 4 spectrum, uh, spectrum type will be rock soil important spark factor 1.5, damping factor 2%. And I'm using a spectrum here, normalized user defined spectrum, um, like this. So wind code also you can use. Uh, select many other uh, wind code standards including ASC, British Standard, NBR, UBC, etc. We are selecting IS standard here for our uh, demo. <clears throat> Operating conditions, uh, geometry, and then finally report. Um, another thing that is important is uh, the saddles obviously um, because we are, uh, this is uh, the main uh, 
topic of discussion today. So I have two saddles. Like I mentioned, you can add multiple saddles. But for our discussion, cur currently we are just applying uh, two saddles here. Um, I have kept the friction factor zero for the first case, and then I will apply friction, and then you will see how much difference it makes. So there is a height of axis HS, which is critical, uh, 0.8 meter. You will see that appear very frequently. So with these, let's run the calculations. It's computing for all the various load cases, so it takes a little bit of uh, time to crunch all the numbers and generate the report. Okay, so I can go here and view the report. There is a way to create a summarized report where it uh, lists only the design, uh, the uh, determining cases. So that takes much less time to generate the report. But here we have a very detailed report for our case because we would require it. So uh, let's quickly re review what's in uh, um, this report. So it lists various cases, as you see, in the uh, uh, moments and loads in plane of saddle. We have case one, uh, which is lifting uh, case with normal wind, new inertia, new weight. But our cases of concern uh, are the cases four through cases nine. So case four is uh, a seismic plus plus, and uh, case five is seismic pl minus plus. And let's look at uh, all these uh, numbers, how they appear, how are they calculated. OK, so as I said, this is a simple uh, um, an a simple case of two saddles. So we should be able to do uh, a basic static equilibrium calculation and find out and verify. So this is a snapshot of the report that we just saw. So how it is calculating is basically for each and every load case, uh, um, loading conditions, it will calculate the vibration period and center of gravity. And then the corresponding period uh, it will be matched with your spectrum value and you obtain the SA over G um, ratio. And then uh, with uh, the other factors like uh, Z, and um, which is the seismic zone factor, the R reduction factor, importance factor, you, appear, you arrive at the se seismic coefficient. Basically, this is the acceleration that is being applied. It's 0.183258. We will be using it uh, continuously. And multiply that with the weight, you get the base shear. OK, so in seismic plus plus, what happens is there is a seismic load which applies downwards and to the right. So the weight of the vessel is calculated as 525. You have height of CG from base, which is HSD. And uh, with the distance between the two saddles is L. So this is L, 1.2. There is a height, uh, 0.8. There is a vertical reaction at both the saddles. There is a horizontal reaction, R to H. But the, remember, the first saddle was uh, not fixed. It was a moving saddle, and we didn't have any friction. So R1H goes to 0. So if you consider these forces and apply the seismic acceleration, the seismic force, uh, the base shear is 96.22 decanewton. So the horizontal seismic force will be same SX, which is applied um, in, in the longitudinal direction to the right, depending on the sign convention that we are uh, uh, applying. And the vertical seismic force will be two-third or 0.667 of that. 
right so the total force uh, vertical force on two saddles due to weight and seismic will be 525 plus 64.178 which is your vertical component of the seismic force so it's 589 now the horizontal reaction goes to zero because there's no friction and if we do the sum of forces we uh, get the r2h uh, which is the size the horizontal um, reaction at the second saddle it will be same in magnitude as sx but opposite in direction because it's resisting the uh, seismic force we, we do the sum of forces likewise in y direction and then uh, next what we do is we do a sum of moment around uh, c which is this point at the base uh, along the cg now if we if you see this is a simple equation of static equilibrium and then when you solve equation 2 and 3 you can find very easily the vertical reactions my vertical reactions are 230.4 which exactly matches with the screenshot in the report that you see so in the report you see 230.4 as the vertical reaction on saddle 1 and 358.7 on saddle 2 so those two match then the next uh, uh, we will consider the shear loads so likewise we have uh, now in this case if you see on the right top the free body diagram there is a vertical load of um, the weight of the head and uh, the seismic component of the weight of the head and then the shell portion to the left of the first saddle um, we have the weight and the seismic uh, reaction uh, force in the downward direction likewise so if you consider that you arrive at the uh, seismic forces and you also arrive at the weights of the individual components and from there you can calculate the shear force which is for the first saddle it is just the negative of the weights plus the seismic uh, forces exerted by the uh, head and the shell portion to the left side of the first saddle and from there I'm getting minus 163.29 as my vertical shear load on saddle 1 and saddle 2 also likewise I'm getting the exact same uh, value 67.1 for the shear, um, shear load on saddle 2 now also the shear load uh, there will be um, another shear load on saddles 1 and 2 which uh, you obtain uh, by um, uh, just considering the reaction which you calculated in the previous case here so from there you get um, 67.1 uh, uh, minus 63.29 and 67.1 for saddle 1 and minus 195.46 and 163.23 for saddle 2 likewise uh, you can follow the same principle and you can get the vertical bending moments so how you get the bending moments is uh, very simple uh, from the forces you just multiply v1 and what is v1 v1 is uh, the weight and the seismic forces and v2 of the uh, head and uh, v2 is the weight and seismic forces of the shell you can refer to the um, uh, image at the bottom left and uh, you arrive at the bending moments in saddle 1 as minus 55.2 and bending moment as at saddle 2 you will get two values uh, minus 132.1 and minus 55.2 so these values you will find there is a small difference between my calculations and the one obtained from autopipe uh, vessels algorithm and the reason is we are calculating in this particular case from first principle whereas um, um, in the program itself like I mentioned it uses the FOC matrix uh, transmission matrix method so that is a numerical um, analysis method um, and it is very powerful it is used for calculating very complex shapes this is a very simple case and for multiple saddles so there could be a very small difference so you, as you see here the difference is almost negligible uh, within uh, definitely uh, plus minus one percent so this is the overall scheme um, and now what happens in the horizontal case uh, so we have seen the vertical uh, reactions shear loads and bending moments uh, the horizontal reaction uh, shear loads and bending moments uh, which are the transverse case is not applicable here because the load is in the longitudinal direction but there will be a, a, long, a longitudinal reaction force on the second saddle which is minus 96.22 which is exactly uh, opposing and countering the uh, horizontal seismic uh, force SX so that's pretty straightforward there 
what happens when you switch the sign uh, when you have uh, minus minus which means uh, in this case as you see uh, the seismic reaction is acting upward and in the um, uh, in the vertical direction and in the horizontal direction it is act acting leftward so uh, using the same sign convention and the same uh, diagram uh, as you see on the top right except for when you apply the seismic reaction forces horizontal you just switch the sign it's minus instead of uh, positive uh, and also for the vertical seismic forces instead of plus 64.17 we are now using minus and then with the same equations you will find uh, the results uh, match with uh, that in the in 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 the in the report i'm getting 294 decanewton for reaction at uh, saddle 1 and 166 at saddle 2. Vertical shear loads likewise uh, you will uh, just switch the sign and you get the vertical shear loads uh, for saddle 1 minus 127 and 166 and for saddle 2 minus 38.6 and 127.8 and likewise the bending moments uh, also you will obtain by considering the uh, weights and the seismic forces and the reactions. Uh, remember there is a mass the weight of the left head it's acting uh, at a distance little away from the uh, tangent line which uh, I've calculated it comes to be something like uh, 98 millimeters 0 0.09868 so there will be an additional moment due to the offset mass many times people make a mistake they apply the weight here and they don't get uh, the correct value and that is uh, not right because uh, there is this additional uh, moment that you need to consider otherwise your results will not be conser conservative now let's look at what happens in the transverse loading case in the transverse loading case as you see in the bottom left uh, the load is being applied um, in the transverse direction uh, the seismic loads um, but there there is also a weight and a seismic component in the vertical plane too so if you see there the vertical plane there are reactions shear loads and moments just like we had for longitudinal load plus in addition we have um, transverse components of reaction shear loads and bending moments which are calculated uh, like i've uh, shown you here so the vertical reactions uh, and the shear loads and bending moments i'm not going to get into details they are exactly uh, very similar to what we did earlier for the transverse reactions it's basically the seismic uh, uh, component sx by 2 uh, and uh, the transverse shear load will be acting accordingly just uh, like con considering a beam and the shear loads being applied in the uh, transverse uh, direction so uh, you can accurately calculate and uh, as we see the results match uh, with the uh, program the transverse reaction loads and moments uh, the, we once you calculate the reactions you can calculate the the bending moments and uh, finally what you have to uh, do in this particular case is you have to combine them so the combination is done by vectorially adding the vertical uh, and the um, horizontal uh, components in the transverse plane so as an example you see here um, 298.5 is your combined reaction uh, for saddle 1 and how you're uh, uh, appearing at that value is you uh, do the square root of the sum of the squares of the horizontal and vertical uh, reactions for saddle 1 which is 294.6 and uh, 48.1 you uh, take add it vectorially you arrive at 298.5 as the uh, reaction uh, in the combined reaction the resultant reaction likewise you find the combined shear loads and the combined bending moments now what happens when we have friction uh, when we have friction uh, there is an additional uh, force now we cannot neglect uh, the uh, reaction horizontal reaction on uh, the saddle which was earlier um, uh, free to move and not having friction so it was saddle one in our case so if you see this I just had a screenshot here to the left of the saddle uh, dialog box and earlier I had a friction factor of zero now I've added 0.3 so what it is doing now is 
during the operation when there is a thermal expansion, saddle 2 is fixed and saddle 1 is resisting the expansion by way of a frictional force. So as you see, uh, these uh, two saddles are as if they are pushed uh, inside each other and it results in a, in a very high value of bending moment. I will show you how much it will go up. So friction factor is a very important consideration. So it is very important that you apply it correctly uh, because the results will otherwise not be conservative. And it is actually um, quite hard to get frictionless um, um, you know, saddle mounts. So it's better to have uh, some friction values added. So an additional moment basically appears here and a, a horizontal reaction force will appear in uh, saddle one. So the same case for analysis was performed with uh, friction. And now you see um, the saddle reactions and the bending moments have significantly gone up. So what you are doing here is uh, basically your uh, horizontal saddle reaction uh, FF uh, will be calculated based on the friction coefficient 0.3 times um, uh, the total uh, weight W saddle, which is the total weight on saddle. So earlier we considered the weight of the equipment. Now we add the weight of the saddle and multiply it by the friction factor. So you will um, arrive at the reaction on the saddle, which is 104.6, the horizontal reaction, which was earlier non-existent. Likewise, the reaction on saddle 2 also goes up and a significant increase in the bending moments. Here are the comparisons with and without friction. So as you see here, uh, the friction was, uh, the bending moment was uh, less without friction and with friction it has significantly gone up. So from minus 54.6, it has uh, increased to almost uh, three times, 138.3. And uh, also for uh, bending moment at saddle two, it has uh, considerably increased um, to the order of almost 70, 80% from 131.4 to 215.5. So there is a sudden increase in uh, your, yes, hello? We've got a question. Uh, does Autopot vessel integrate with, does it send these loads to any uh, other Bentley software or any other type of software? These, these, uh, uh, no, so right now we don't have a direct integration, but we, you can of course um, uh, use STAD for the analysis. Uh, but currently there is no uh, integration. The nozzle load, of course, you can send it to Nozzle Pro for the uh, local load analysis. Uh, but uh, not uh, the saddle reactions. And there's also Any other question? The the uh, the nozzle loads can also be sent to. Um, uh, you, you can, there's a also yes bi bidirectional integration with Autopy for uh, um, nozzle uh, taking the nozzle load from Autopy files, which you can use for doing local load analysis in uh, Autopy vessel. Thank there's you. also the. Can you, can you, Luke, uh, please uh, speak close to the microphone? I cannot hear you very well. Yeah, there was also the question of what codes does Autopipe Vessel cover? Yeah, so Autopipe Vessel uh, covers um, ASME codes, uh, Section 8, Division 1 and 2, um, AD Morgblatter German code, PD5500 French code app. And um, uh, we have recently included GB150, uh, the Chinese code which we'll have a commercial release uh, soon in the upcoming version. Uh, so it's uh, e EN code is also there. Um, so um, basically e PD5500, uh, EN, uh, there is a GOST code, Russian GOST, um, code F French and ASME. These are the major codes that are uh, covered. Any other question, Luke? Yeah. Uh, uh... We also have the question, uh, are these horizontal vessels the only type of vessels that the software can handle? What other types no. of vessels? Can yeah, you can, you, can, you can do vertical vessel design. Uh, we can do multiple uh, chamber jacketed vessels, vertical vessels, horizontal vessels, vertical vessels on different kinds of supports, including uh, lugs, uh, legs, skirts. <laughs> Uh, you can also do air coolers, um, heat exchangers of various uh, TMA configurations, and storage tanks. Okay. Okay. Uh, we hit our time limit. 
Okay. Yeah. So let me quickly wrap up. I have al almost covered everything. So the final uh, po uh, portion is the Zeek calculation. Um, as you know, there are two parts of the Zeek calculation uh, method for uh, saddles. Uh, first one is the, to calculate the effective reaction uh, load saddle angle. Uh, the way uh, to do it is uh, basically you consider the uh, values of um, the horizontal and the vertical reactions for transverse loading. So if there is no transverse loading, this is not required, um, uh, but uh, it, it will be required uh, in case there is, and then you consider the effective saddle angle. Okay, okay. and then the second one will, will be um, the calculation of the Zeke coefficients and stresses. Uh, with the Zeek parameters, and that is done uh, once you um, uh, arrive at the uh, reactions, combined reactions, shear loads, and bending moments. So, uh, based on those uh, three combined uh, reaction uh, and shear loads and bending moments, you can cal calculate the longitudinal shear and circumferential stresses and can compare it with the applicable uh, standard. So what what questions? Yeah. Uh, can auto pipe vessel calculate the optimum saddle location? Uh, calculation of optimal saddle location? Uh, no, this is something you have to provide. Uh, it, it, it has some default values, uh, but uh, this is something you have to vary and uh, do it yourself. Okay. The follow up question to that question is and how are the shell stresses calculated when there is an expansion bellow in the shell? Shell stresses calculated when there is an expansion. So uh, the way the, the expansion bellow does is a, the, the reason for putting the expansion bellow is for calculation of uh, the um, um, tube sheet thicknesses. So that is what it is uh, considered for. And the shell stresses uh, will uh, be calculated. Um, uh, it, it will take the consideration of the expansion joint. Uh, for the, but this is only for uh, f double fixed tube sheet heat exchangers. Okay, and then is it possible to model vertical vessels with two vertical chambers? Uh, modeling of vertical vessels with two vertical chambers, um, I think it is possible, but let me get back to that later. Offhand, I cannot uh, suggest. I, I think it should be doable. Okay. All right, I think. That's addressed all the questions that we have, and I think we've run out of time. OK. So um, should I stop here or continue? Maybe just uh, another five minutes, we should be done. So the f foundation loads uh, are uh, summarized in the foundation uh, part of the report. And uh, it, it actually takes into consideration uh, the weights of the saddle apart from uh, the loads uh, and the reactions that you see cal that we considered uh, in the, and discussed about there is also a foundation load factor which you can apply uh, which adds as a um, additional safety margin if you will so you can apply that and that appears in the foundation load summary so with that i will uh, end here thank you very much and if you have any additional question you can uh, i'll be happy to answer